begin our study of rational expressions and equations. Rational expressions are just fractions. They're algebraic fractions, though. So they can contain variables, x's and y's and a's and b's. But they behave just like fractions. And so what we're going to do in our next several, it's going to take um, many, many video clips, is we're going to simplify fractions, we're going to multiply fractions, and then divide them, and then we're going to add and subtract fractions. Um, it's my belief uh, that multiplying and dividing is a little bit easier than adding and subtracting because you require a common denominator to add and subtract. So we're going to kind of go from a little bit easier to a little bit harder. Um, before we actually simplify an algebraic fraction, uh, let's go ahead and just talk about a simple fraction that you're comfortable with. The fraction 3 ninths reduces to 1 third. And that because we, that's because we say 3 goes into here once and 3 goes into there three times. And so we're left with 1 third. But another way to think about that is to write these as their prime factors. Now 3 is a prime number, um, so I don't necessarily need to do this. But the number 9 is written as 3 times 3. And so what I'm going to do here, what I really have done up here in the shortcut process, is I've removed the number 1. I kind of like to try to illustrate that with a block letter 1. 3 over 3 is the number 1, and 1 times any fraction is still itself, or 1 times any number is still itself. So when I take out those 3's, I'm left with the fraction 1 third. Well, I'm going to do the same kind of thing with algebraic fractions, but I'm going to have to factor them, unless they're um, monomials. I may not illustrate those in that way. So let's go ahead and look at an algebraic fraction that just has monomials. So I have 7a cubed over 21a, and I want to simplify that. So again, not really necessary to write all this work out, but I just want you to see this. We already know that when we divide, we subtract our exponents. But take a look at that in its factored form, and take a look at this as 7 times 3 times a. And so what I'm doing is I'm removing the number 1. 7 over 7 is equal to the number 1. I haven't changed the value of the fraction. I'm removing a over a, which is the number 1. And I'm left with, in this problem, a to the second power in the numerator over 3 in the denominator. You can write it like that. Please know that you could have written that answer as 1 third a squared. Um, I kind of prefer the, the first means of writing that answer. Also, you know, I could have just said here, oh, look, I'm going to subtract their exponents. And 3 minus 1 is 2. And then I could say 7 goes in here once, and 7 goes into there three times. Another approach, but I just wanted you to see this being written out in its factored form. Let's do another um, where I have to factor the denominator. So let's take 21 over 6x minus 9. So your first step in simplifying algebraic fractions is always going to be factor anything that can be. This denominator has a greatest common factor in it. It can have a 3 taken out of it, and so when I do that, I'll need a 2x here minus a 3, so I'll have that binomial. And upstairs I have the number 21. If I, could, if I wanted to, I could write 21 as 3 times 7, so I could show that in its factored form. But it's just as easy to say that 3 goes into the number 3 once, and 3 goes into 21 7 times. And my result here, then, is in the numerator 7 over 2x minus 3. In a few problems, I don't think I want to use this one, um, we're going to mention that we have to list our restrictions on our domain of our function. Um, I haven't writ written these in function notation, but I have to be careful to not divide by zero. So we are going to talk about what values for x are not plausible in this particular problem as well. This one's a little bit, little bit more challenging, so we won't do it quite yet. But we will get there if you, um, if you know that you have to address that issue. Uh, let's go with um, 3x plus 21 over x squared plus 7x. So in case I haven't said this enough, you have to factor everything before you reduce fractions, algebraic fractions. So remember, your first step in factoring is to take the greatest common factor out. 
So let's just always pause to see if there's a greatest common factor that can come out of those. And sure enough, there's a three that comes out of that numerator, and then I need that binomial, x plus seven. And down here, yeah, there's a common factor of an x. And so I'm gonna take out that x, and I'll need an x plus seven. If I were to multiply this out and get the x squared, and x times seven gives me that seven x. And these are in factored form, remember, and you can remove common factors. So the factors can by, be binomials, but they have to look identical, and these do. X plus seven over X plus seven is equal to the number one. So all I am doing is reducing one out of this, and my fan, final answer to this problem is three over X. Let's talk about those restrictions on the domain for this one, because this one's a pretty easy one. You have to talk about it in terms of your original problem. And my original problem had in the denominator an x and an x plus 7. By the zero product rule, if that's the way you, um, it, it's a pretty easy problem to see, but by the zero product rule, if I do not want this denominator to be equal to zero, then the zero product rule, if, if it was equal to zero, I would say x equals zero. Well, I'm going to say here that x cannot equal zero because zero times zero plus seven, which is seven, gives me zero for the denominator. That's a problem. The zero product rule here would let me take x plus seven and set it equal to zero and subtract seven from both sides. And a solution for x for that equation, if it was equal to zero, is a negative seven. But I want to make sure that denominator is not equal to zero. So these two values are restrictions on the domain of the original function. Just because I cross these out doesn't mean that x is equal to a negative 7 is not a restriction, so be careful there. I'll, from time to time, mention the restrictions, and I'll, I'll be sure to pick one that's a little bit harder. Let's do, um, let's do a couple more problems, and then we'll, we'll break this segment. So we're still simplifying algebraic fractions. So I have now a trinomial. Over a trinomial. And I need to factor those. So let's see, these are easy trinomials to factor because they have a one in front of their x squared term. So this numerator can be factored into the product of two binomials where there's an x in the front of each of those because their product would be x squared. And I'm now looking for two numbers whose product, remember, product is a negative nine, and I want those numbers to add to be a negative eight. And I'm not gonna bother with the tables and, and, and going through the list of factors. Three and three aren't gonna work. You know, three and a negative three, they won't add up to be a negative nine, but a negative nine and a positive one will multiply to be a negative nine, and they'll add to be that negative eight. Downstairs, I want to factor this trinomial as well, and it's got a one in front of the x squared term. So I'm going to put an x in the front of each of these because of that x squared term, and I'm now looking for two numbers whose product is four and adds to be five, not two and two going to be four and one. And sometimes I'll peek up there because I'm hoping that one of the binomials at least will match because my goal was to reduce these fractions. So, you know, I, I kind of peek up there and I'm wondering, I wonder if x plus one is one of the factors. Um, let's, let's list the restrictions. x could not equal a negative four in that problem because a negative four plus four would be equal to zero and zero times anything is zero. So that's one of the restrictions right here, x could not equal a negative one. I could set that x plus one equal to zero and solve for x. Those are the two restrictions. The final answer to this problem when I remove the common factors is the x minus, n minus nine and the x plus four. Be careful, don't go crossing those x's off. Um, this can't be factored. Those, those are binomials, as is. This is how it, it's one times x minus nine and it's one times x plus four. You don't need those parentheses around it. But these are not factors, they are terms. There's a minus sign next to the x in the numerator. There's a plus sign, not a multiplication symbol. If there were factors, there'd be a multiplication symbol and you could reduce that. So make sure you stop right here. I think I'm gonna go ahead and pause at this moment. We'll do some more simplifying of algebraic um, or rational expressions in the next clip.